Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Sharp Weekly and in this video I'm going to show you that how you can find the user's latitude and longitude, basically the location, and display it on the screen using Flutter. I already have a very simplistic UI build. You can see that it only has a button, find location, and a label which doesn't really appear anything or it doesn't say anything, that's why you don't really see it. So how can we find user's location? so that we can grab the latitude and longitude. There are many different packages available for that, but I'm going to use a package called Geolocator. So the first thing we need to do is we need to install Geolocator. So I'm gonna to go to pub.dev and find or search for Geolocator. Then you can simply copy this particular dependency of Geolocator and add it to your pub.pubspec.yaml file. So if I go open it up, I will simply paste it right underneath the Cupertino icons. Now in Visual Studio Code, if I save it using Command S, it is automatically going to start downloading and installing the dependency, which it is doing right now. If you're using Android Studio, then you can simply run the Flutter packages get command and it is going to do the same exact thing. Okay, great. So we got that working. Now the next step, as you can see in the documentation, is to update the Gradle properties. So these two things we need to add, this is basically saying that we will be using Android X, which is everything is kind of like moving to Android X, kind of like the X framework compatibility point of view. So we have to find Gradle.properties and add these two things together. Now if I go to Android, I can find Gradle.properties in the Android folder. And simply over here, we will go ahead and add these two things. Perfect. The other thing that it is saying that the compile SDK version should be 28. So this is make sure that you have the Android app build.gradle compile SDK version to 28. So if I go to Android app build.gradle, you should be able to see that I have the compile SDK version on line number 29 to be 28. Now, if you just change it to 28, it's not really going to work if you don't have the 28 version for Android installed. So let me go ahead and pull up the Android Studio and make sure that you understand that you have to download that particular SDK so that you can use it. Just by putting 28 or 29, it's not going to work. Uh, it's not going to magically download things. So I'm gonna go into Configure SDK Manager and over here you can see Android 28 is Pi and I have 28 and I also have 29 also. So that's why I'm saying 28. If, if I didn't had 28, then it would have not worked. All right. You can even say, see over here, install, install. Uh, some of them are partially installed. Some of them are not installed. You can see all of these are not installed. So you can simply install them clicking over here and then installing it. Perfect. So we got these things ready. Now it's time for us to see that how we can uh, display it on an Android device. Now, whenever you are asking for these things like a geolocation, you have to ask for user's permission. And in Android, you ask for permission by adding the user's permission tags into your manifest, into your Android manifest file. So I'm just gonna copy this over here and try to find the Android manifest file. So it should be an Android app and then source main. So let's go back. We'll go to Android app source main and you can see Android manifest file. The things that I copied, I'm just gonna paste it right over here inside the manifest. Perfect. So this is going to set it up at least for the Android. But you also have to do something for iOS or else it's not gonna work. Now for iOS, it's a little bit different because you can see that for iOS, you have to put the keys in your file. So this is the location when in use. This is the location which is always. This is the location when in use description and so on. So right now, I'm just gonna try this one. We can actually copy all of these things in the, in the iOS, that's fine. Now let's go back to the iOS. This time I'm gonna open the iOS folder and I'm gonna go into the runner folder and inside there you're gonna find info.plist file and now I can add those keys that I copied. All right, there we go. 
And just for safety, I can also add all of these keys. We'll see that which one is valid or which one is not. But right now, I just want to get this thing working. So I'm going to add these keys also. Perfect. And now we are ready to start using it. So now we have to simply go and get the current location. Now, in order to get the current location, we are going to use the geolocator library or the package that we just downloaded. And we are going to use the get current position function of the geolocator. So at what point do we want to find this particular location? When we click the button. So let's go over here and let's go and add it into our main.dart. This is the button press. I'm going to find or it's going to fire something called get current location. The underscore means that this is a private function. I can go over here, well, inside the class, hopefully, and create this particular function. So let's go ahead and add this function. We'll call it uh, get current, and what do we call it? Location, so let's copy it. Let's make it void function. We are not really returning anything, I guess. There we go. Now we can use something called a geolocator, the one library, the package that we have actually installed, and make sure that you add an import on the top as line number two says. And now I can go ahead and find the get current position. The get current position does take in an argument, which is the desired accuracy. So the desired accuracy, in this case, I'm going to go for high, meaning go ahead and take a little bit of time, but find me the best position you can find. And you can see that if you hover on it, the location is accurate with a distance of 10 meter and between zero and 100 meter on Android. So it's not completely accurate. It's not going to pinpoint you, but you can see that is, uh, you know, it, it's going to be good enough. So I'm going to go ahead and put it at async. And since this is uh, returning a promise, I'm going to evaluate the promise using a weight. And now I can get some sort of a position. And right now, we are simply going to go ahead and print out the position so that we can see it being displayed. And that's it. All right. Now, this is all running fine. Let me go ahead and uh, do a hard reset or hard restart on all the devices or both the devices. So you can see it's restarting. And maybe it has already restarted. It's hard to tell right now, I guess. But let me click on find location. Let me click on find location. I don't think it has restarted. Okay, so here we go. Now we're getting this error right now, missing plugin, no implementation for permission, blah, blah, blah. And it's not even restarted right now. Missing plugin exception. You can see all of these kind of errors are now missing plugin, location services permission, no implementation found, check permission status, and so on. All right, so it turns out that this is not really a problem with anything. It was just simply because I was running Flutter run minus d all or hyphen d all, which means that I'm running it for all devices. It's kind of weird that even if I did the restart on the devices, it didn't really restart it. So it didn't know that the code that I wrote uh, also had the permissions and everything set up, which is kind of weird. This is the first time uh, this has happened to me, but uh, let's go ahead and build it again. So we haven't really made any changes. Everything is still the same. When we click the button, you can see over here on press, we're simply going to go ahead and get the position and display the position on to the terminal. So by running flutter run minus d all or hyphen d all, uh, it, we are going to run flutter or our app for both the platform at the same time. Uh, it does lose the ability of making a change in your code and it's restarting. It doesn't really do that. If you do want to restart, simply click on the terminal and press R. If you do want to do a uh, heavy restart, kind of like a, not a refresh, but a heavy restart, kind of a restarting the whole app, then you do a shift R and that will do a forced kind of like a restart the app. So you can see right now it's uh, building and it's going to run the application on Android and then it's going to launch it on the iOS device. We haven't really made any code changes. The only thing I did was to kind of like stop the location service it will stop the terminal and uh, we just ran it again just like running flutter 
run hyphen d all. All right. So let's see that if this works now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on find location. And now when I click on find location, it actually asks me that uh, allow the allow hello location to access this device location. I'm just going to say allow all the time. And there we go. It's just going to print out the location onto the console. And eventually you will see that it actually starts on the iOS device and it's going to do the same exact thing. We don't really have any UI or anything, but right now if I go ahead and say find location, it will simply go ahead and add the location onto the console. So if I go ahead and press find location multiple times, you can see that the location is actually displayed right over here. Perfect, right? So this is how you find the location. Now, if you want to display the location, we have to do a little bit differently. So this location object does contain the latitude and longitude. So we can go ahead and what we can do is change this app from state list widget to the app state. And we will go ahead and say that this is state of the app because this time we want to have a state. So that's why we are making it state full widget. So there we go, state full widget. And for this to work, we have to override the app, one of the functions, which will return us the app state. This will be a create state function. And this is going to return us the app state, perfect. So now when we get the location, right now we are simply printing it on the on the console, on the terminal, but we can actually go ahead and display it on our screen. So I can go ahead and maybe say something like, uh, well, we don't really have any variables, so let's go ahead and create a variable. I will go ahead and create a string variable. And let's just say location message. You can call it anything you want, obviously. And now we can actually go ahead and create this message, but I, I'm going to call this inside the set state and I can say a location message and now I can create some sort of a string with injecting these values. So I want to inject the one of the property of position which is called latitude and comma and then we can go ahead and inject another property which is the same object position dot longitude. Now since this is inside the set state whenever this is going to get set it is going to fire the build function again and render or recreate the whole UI. And it is at that time that we can actually go ahead and display our location message. Let's go ahead and click over here, Shift R for a restart in a hot restart on both the devices. And hopefully that will restart both the devices. It's kind of hard to tell if they're restarting. Sometimes you can't tell, but there we go. It's working on both of our devices, the Android device as well as the iOS device. So we are able to find location uh, based on the Android device and iOS device works correctly on both devices. So this is how you will use location services to find a location. Now, all of this will be part of my upcoming Flutter course, which will be released in the future. I can't really say, I don't really know which month, but it will be released, it's coming shortly. Uh, meanwhile, if you do want to support my channel, then let me show you how you can support it. If you go to Udemy, you can check out my different courses that are available. You can see I have a lot of courses on Udemy. I also have a Swift UI course. If you're doing Flutter, uh, you will be easily learn Swift UI because the concepts are very, very similar. You can see that I have my new course on the Combined Framework, Rx Swift, and most of the courses are revolve around iOS development. So if you want any of these courses, simply check out the YouTube description and click on the link in the description. Please do realize that, that you have to click on the link on the description. That will be the best way to get the course. So please use the links in the description of the YouTube video. That will be great. Um, that's it. I mean, if you have any questions, please let me know. And thank you so much. And go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel so that you know if when I put out some new videos and whenever the course is released, you will get a notification and I'll share some discounted coupons for the course also. So thank you so much and see you next time.